Welcome to Electron Online and now we're continuing with the Markov chains exercises and here we're going to do an example, a 3x3 example. We have a, an example that shows brand loyalty which means there's different stores, let's say there's three stores A, B and C and in each case each store will retain a certain percentage, a certain fraction of their customers but some of the customers will be trying the other stores to see if they're better or not and so we'll be switching back and forth over time and here the conditions are that 10% of the shoppers at A will switch to B and 10% will switch to C. Of the shoppers going to B, 20% will switch to A and 20% will switch to C. And the shoppers that go to C, 10% will switch to A and 20% will switch to B. So based upon that, what will be finally what we call the stable distribution matrix? What will be the number of customers going to each of the three stores over time when this plays out? Of course, what we need is we need the transition matrix and that will then contain the probabilities of them switching back and forth and then from that we should be able to calculate the stable distribution matrix so first of all let's try to find the uh, transition matrix the one containing all the transition probabilities as we call them so on the top we have from A, B and C and on the side we have to A, B and C so this is from at the top and this is 2 at the side. So we're going to have 9 elements in there that we need to find. So first of all, from A to B is 10%. So from A to B is 0 0.1 and from A to C is 0 0.1. And since we know that they have to add up to 1, that means the number of customers staying within A from week to week or month to month, whatever the time period is here, will be 80% will stay at A. Okay. From B, 20% will switch to A, so from B to A, that's 0.2, and from B to C is 0.2 as well. That means 0.6 will remain at B on any given week. And so let's just assume that the time period is weak. And then from C, 10% will switch to A, so from C to A is 0.1, from C to B is 20%, so 0 0.2, and at 0 0.7 here. We have to have the large numbers across the diagonal if shoppers mainly remain within the stores that they're shopping at. All right, so this is our transition matrix. Now we also know that to find the stable distribution matrix, we know that the transition matrix multiplied by the stable distribution matrix will yield the stable distribution matrix. And since we don't know what that is, let's say that this is equal to a, B, and C. And so what we have to do is find the values of A, B, and C. Remember that A plus B plus C will have to add up to 1. So we know that A plus B plus C adds up to 1. So what we really need is we need some, some equations. And from the product of these matrices, we're able to come up with three equations with those three unknowns to be able to solve for A, B, and C. So we're going to multiply this transition matrix times the distribution, the initial, oh no, this will be the stable distribution, which will give us the stable distribution when we multiply them out. Okay, so when we multiply this matrix and this matrix, we get that matrix. Now we have to find A, B, and C. All right, so we have 0.8A, 0.8A, plus 0.2B, 0.2B, plus 0.1C equals A. So again, it's this times this, plus this times this, plus this times this. Now we take the second row, we go again, this times this, plus this times this, plus this times this. So 0.1a plus 0.6b plus 0.2c equals b. And then finally we take the bottom row in this column. So we have 0.1a plus 0.2b plus 0.7c equals c. Okay, now that we have these three equations, we also have this fourth equation right here because we know that A plus B plus C has to add up to 1. We now have to find A, B, and C for the values for the stable distribution matrix. Now, how do we do that? Well, it turns out we always need to include this constraint. This is kind of like a constraint. We know that A plus B plus C must equal 1, and we have to include that somehow. So the idea is to take these three equations, and we probably only need two of the three. It doesn't matter which two we take. And we're going to solve one of the equations for one of the variables in terms of the other two and then we're going to plug that into a second equation and then we're going to solve for one variable in terms of a second variable because we'll have eliminated the third variable and then we're going to plug those values back in that equation so that's a strategy so let's take the first equation and what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by 10 to get rid of the decimal when we do that we get the following 
we get 8a plus 2b plus c is equal to 10a. And then if we move the 8a to the other side, we end up with 2b plus c is equal to 10 minus 8, which is 2a. And then finally, we can take b across. We can say that c is equal to 2a minus 2b. So now what we've done is we've written c in terms of a and b. We're going to take that and we're going to plug that into one of our other equations. And it really doesn't matter which one, one of the two other equations. So when we do that, and also what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this equation and multiply it by 10 again to get rid of the decimal. So let's take the second equation. This becomes a plus 6b plus 2c is equal to 10b. And then uh, we can go ahead and move the, uh, let's see here, it doesn't matter right now. What we're going to do instead of going this way, we're going to go over here, plug it into my c value right there. So we can now say that a plus 6b plus 2 times, instead of c, we'll write 2a minus 2b is equal to 10b. And now all we have to do is write one variable in terms of the other here. So we'll go ahead and get rid of the, with the parentheses and combine like terms and see what we get. So we have a plus 4a, because 2 times 2 is 4a, that gives us 5a is equal to 6b minus 4b, that would be, oops, that would be plus, so plus 6b minus 4b, which is 2b, is equal to 10b. Move the 2b to the other side, we get 5a is equal to 10 minus 2, which is 8b. Or we can say that, uh, well, let's say b is equal to uh, 5 over 8a. All right. So now I have b in terms of a. I have C in terms of A and B, so I, I can go ahead now and plug in uh, C. So I can plug in my value for B over here. So I'm going to do that. And I'm going to write C is equal to 2A minus 2 times. And instead of B, I'm going to write 5 over 8A. So 5 over 8A. And so we get C is equal to 2A minus 2 times that. That would be 10 over 8A. And so that would be 16 over 8. So I might as well write it out. So it's easy. 16 over 8a minus 10 over 8a. That would be 6 over 8a. So c equals 6 over 8a, which is equal to uh, 3 over 4a. All right. So now we have c in terms of a. We have b in terms of a. And I might as well just leave it in terms of over 8 because that way I have this over 8 like this. And now I can go ahead and plug that back into my equation over there. So we have a plus b, but instead of b, I'm going to write 5 over 8a plus c, and I'm going to write 6 over 8a is equal to 1. All right, so this would be 8 over 8a, 8 over 8a, so 8 plus 5 plus 6, that gives me 13, that gives me 19 over 8a, so 19 over 8a is equal to 1, or a is equal to 8 over 19. All right, after all that work, we finally figured out what a is equal to. Now, to get the other two is fairly easy, because we know that what b is in terms of a, and we know what c is in terms of a, so it would be relatively easy to find b and c. So here we can say that b is equal to 5 over 8, and instead of writing a, we write 8 over 19, so this is 5 over 19, so that is the value for b. Now we can do the same for c over here. So we have c is equal to 6 over 8a, oh, but instead of writing a, I'm going to write 8 over 19, 8 over 19, and so 6 over 19 is equal to c. So now we have a, b, and c which we can now plug into our matrix right here. So we now say that the stable distribution matrix can be written as, for A would be 8 over 19, for B would be 5 over 19, and for C would be 6 over 19. Of course, we can do a quick check because those should add up to 1. And so 8 plus 5 is 13, plus 6 is 19, so it adds up to 1, and that's 21, which means 42.1% of the customers will eventually end up Okay, to find the value for b, we take 5 divided by 19, which is 
0 0.263, 0 0.263, so 26.3% of the customers stay at store B, and then 6 divided by 19 is 0 0.316, 0 0.316. 316. So 31.6% of all the customers will eventually remain at C. And that will be the customer distribution after this has run its course. So again, those should all add up to one. So if we make sure that's seven, that's nine, that's nine. Yes, that exactly adds up to one. So that is correct. And so this is how we figure out the stable distribution matrix of a situation where you have three stores, shoppers going back and forth between the stores, but eventually they'll end up in a certain arrangement where the certain percentage will then go to each store as a loyal customer, even though there's still some changing around, that will be the eventual distribution of customers between the stores. And only if we change the matrix here will the, the, the stable distribution matrix change to a new set of numbers, but if this stays stable, then that will remain stable at that point as well. That's how we do that.